Researchers from MIT use machine learning to create new and better hash functions that are 30% faster and only cause half the number of collisions compared to traditional hash functions, which allow us to essentially create better hash tables and databases, which I think is a really cool application of AI to classic computer science and with the classic problem of trying to store data in a lookup table. If we want to store values in a dictionary, we can use a unique key that maps itself to a unique value. And we use a hashing function to do so in the case of hash tables. But if you have two values that map to the same data mapped by the function, then you run into the problem of a collision. And there are traditionally two main ways to solve this. The first one is using an open hash table. And the idea is that at each entry in the hash table, the key points to the head of a linked list. And so that if you have a collision, that the colliding element or value just gets appended to the end of the linked list. The issue with this is that you don't really know how big your linked lists could be, especially if you have a lot of collisions, you could essentially have a linked list of size n. And part of the reason we even use hash tables in the first place is because of their O of 1 lookup time. And if you have a linked list, the worst case, you could have an O of n lookup time because you could probably, if you map to the key, you might have to go all the way to the end of the linked list to find the value. But on the average case, an open hash table is still O of 1, but in the worst case, it's O of n, which causes a big issue. Like say if you have a database with billions of entries, you could have billions long linked lists and then that O of n scales up dramatically. Tradi traditionally, the second way to solve it is using a closed hash table. And the idea is that if you have a collision at a certain key, then it's just gonna look for the next available key to just put it in. The issue is that if you run out of space in your hash table, then you're gonna to have to create a new hash table with double the space, and then you're gonna to have to recopy elements over, which is very, very computationally expensive. And the reason this happens is because hash tables on a low level are implemented as arrays, because dictionaries themselves are not like a native object to the computer, they're implemented as blocks of memory. And so how machine learning comes into play is that we wanna use a machine learning model to predict the distribution of a sample of the data you wanna store. And then you want to use that same distribution learned by the model to predict the location of the key in the hash table that the model would point to. Essentially, the model would give you a key, a unique key for each element in the data set if you just follow the distribution. And they found that using a machine learning model as a hash function was easier to build and ran faster than the optimized hash functions they were previously using. And the best part is the machine learning model adapts its distribution to each unique data set, which means it's going to adapt its hash function it uses to each unique database, which increases a lot of security because each database has its own unique hash function that is hard to predict. The only downside is that the data doesn't have a predictable normal-like distribution, which means you might have to pre-process and clean it, which again costs a lot of, it. that could be expensive to do. The machine learning model could actually cause more collisions than the hash, than the original hash function itself. But the main takeaway from this is that you should try to apply machine learning to classic computer science problems like this is a very common data structure that's used. And I, we've, we've seen how popular graph neural nets are. That's another example of applying graph theory and that whole part of computer science with machine learning. So therefore you should try to pair different parts of classic computer science to modern computer science and AI, maybe even quantum, and try to pair things together to see if you can get better performance. That's the end goal.